this is a presentation, uh, more of a celebration of the wonders of Mimbre's pottery, really uh, wanting to just take a look at the remarkable work that happened. This all happened from about 900 uh, to 1150. There was about 250 years of the Mimbre's culture where this kind of precise, um, wonderful um, geometric and figurative uh, drawing was done on open bowls. And um, the Mimbre's culture, as you saw in the earlier presentation, uh, spanned from about 200 um, common era on to um, 1150 and then just disappeared. But we're just going to take some time and look at these pieces. You've gotten some other articles and information about the, um, there's videos and there's, there's also the previous PowerPoint, which does show you uh, basics about what we know about the Mimbres. But um, here, what I want to do is just stroll through the gallery, take a look at these pieces, contemplate them, and then uh, I want to show you some amazing contemporary interpretations by the artist Al Faro, who is a uh, hero of mine. Um, we'll start with these pieces. Um, the left has a piece of um, uh, a figure of, of a woman giving birth, and you can see the little baby coming out uh, from beneath her with hand waving. I love that. And then the rabbit on the right has a, um, looks like a sword. The Mimbres are also known for their um, uh, wonderful, you can see this um, uh, geometric pattern. And as you look at this one, you can see that it's on a three point. It's kind of separated into three sections, uh, which is not as common as the four section, but a beautiful uh, geometric patterning. And um, so that is another way that Mimbres decorated their, their work. Here we see uh, turkeys eating a centipede, and um, there is a kind of naturalism about this. Uh, you can see also one of the characteristics of this late Mimbres period is that the, the rims are ornamented with these very fine lines and sometimes geometric patterns, but it has a way of framing the imagery and declaring the, the bowl space. And um, you see what's naturalistic about this. I don't know that the centipedes were actually ever that, that big, <coughs> Excuse me, but this flock of turkeys is quite a natural kind of occurrence. I uh, have turkeys moving around my home all the time, and they look very much like this, and they're always traveling in a flock. Great lizard uh, here with a much more ornate rim uh, design. And um, the other thing about this lizard that is quite lovely is how it um, has this geometric. Uh, all of the animals and humans, off, most often they have uh, this interplay of some kind of geometric patterning on their, um, within the form of their, of their bodies. And I just love those big eyes as well. Here, uh, some kind of swan or stork eating an insect, and again, quite an ornate rim pattern. And this is one of the more provocative of uh, the images um, that survived. And here what you see is a large figure uh, called perhaps a man, um, but is it, in the description I saw, but I, it may be a god figure um, just because of looking at the headdress and the outsized scale. A lot of cultures depict the gods as larger than humans, but in other ways, no different. And you can see these little characters have, each have penises and, uh, and then this large uh, character has a penis so large it needs to be um, supported by three men. And of course, this was the image of, the, this was the piece that was stolen out of all the, the hundreds of images, thousand pieces in the collection of the Minnesota, University of Minnesota's anthropology uh, department. This piece was stolen and um, they took it seriously enough that they reported the theft to the FBI. And then within a few years, it just reappeared in the collection mysteriously. Here again, you have that um, similar composition of a uh, kind of bifurcation. It's mirrored top and bottom. And uh, these two shore type birds are eating 
uh, the fish. And you can also see this, the, the wonderful kind of negative space work, this kind of clover shape um, where the drawing is contained and, and the geometry of the, of the uh, outside designs as well. And here, um, you can see yeah, it is quite common. Uh, the bird idea is one that shows up a lot. And it looks like one that'd be fun to play with, just getting a general bird impression um, and then going to town with the geometry within the figure. It looks like it'll be a lot of fun. Definitely want to try that. And this is something else that happened uh, was is this kind of mashup. Sometimes human figures have animal heads, or in this case, this fish uh, is also sharing the body with some kind of bighorn sheep of some kind. And this again, there's moments of tremendous naturalism. Uh, I love uh, the ma mama quail in this has a beautiful geometric pattern in her body and then is followed by her what is that, I don't know, chicks, quailings, just following her along. And uh, there are a number of wonderful hummingbird images uh, let's get that back. The number of hummingbird images that I really uh, enjoy, uh, and this is, is one of them. Uh, there's a piece you saw in the earlier presentation with multiple hummingbirds, and they all have three legs, which I found fascinating. Um, but And there's something going on here where the, the rim has a very ornate geometric pattern to it. Here you see that mirroring again, and there's a there's a mirroring, but it's not slavish. So the antelopes are pretty close to one another, but the geometry on the bodies is is clearly a, a kind of a free zone where they get to experiment and play and create their own images. Um, and then look at this uh, human figure on the left. Uh, it's got legs and arms and then uh, this pointed bird beak kind of situation. And I don't know what that image is on the right. And this one uh, is really quite unique and strange. And, you know, I begin to suspect, um, I don't, I guess, I don't know if it's, a, it, I don't know what its origins are, but the appendages seem to terminate in turkey feathers uh, and turkey tails and almost like they're wearing little Mimbre's baseball caps. And this one, uh, I know it isn't the case, uh, they didn't have Greek mythology, but this does echo the idea of um, Alida and the swan, uh, but in reverse, the male figure um, and the bird. And there are some fantastic fish pieces done. Again, uh, you can see the ornament of the rim. And here is a, um, another fish piece with uh, the geometry free flowing on the bodies of the fish. Um, unlikely that it's whales uh, because the Mimbres never left their valley. They didn't, they didn't uh, interact with other cultures. And you can see some snakes as well. And one of my favorites um, is this image of this man with almost wings, um, and uh, it was described as a Batman, but it's, it's just a fascinating uh, image that I hope to play with when I do my own designs. Um, really exciting. And we'll look at a few geometric forms. This you can see is divided down the center, and then each of those halves are divided and mirrored. Here again is a uh, kind of divide down the center uh, pattern, a little less precise than others we have seen, maybe from an earlier period. And here you can see some wonderful kind of spiral uh, spirals that are squared off. And um, this is just so densely drawn, isn't it? Um, here is another geometric pattern. And um, you can see this one has more of a fluid quality to it because some of the lines are allowed to have curve to them rather than be sharp angles. And another geometric pattern, uh, broader strokes, fairly simple. And now we're into the work of Al Farrell and uh, you can look him up and find this online. 
Um, and he does a series of Membres pieces and he beautifully echoes the drawing style and imagery of the icon iconography of the Membres. But in this case, he adds his own touches. Like, I love the fact that the machine gun has a geometric patterning going on like the Membres, but it's a man with gun and flag. You see the American flag in there. And this is his piece called Eagle, which is actually a jet fighter with the geometric patterns. Here's a piece called Mother Daughter Mortar Launcher. And Crouching Men on Caterpillars slash Tanks. And again, you can see that positive negative. He's, he's mirroring so much about the membranes. You can see he's putting in his own kill holes. He's got, um, it's cut, he breaks the pieces and glues them back together. There's a, a divide down the center and that wonderful uh, negative space making this double lobed kind of uh, imagery. And this is really fun. This is uh, crouching motorcycle riders and you'll see that the motorcycles actually are uh, sort of transformed gazelle. And uh, the man riding the motorcycle is actually um, getting his, he's, he's uh, trailing rabbit ears. And that uh, covers our presentation.